Hey everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I know we can all relate to. At some point or another, everybody has had feelings about this kind of thing. And I think it's really important to talk about some of the ways that we can get over it. Today I'm going to be talking about board games that I think are very, very good when you play solo. Here is my list of the top five single player games. Before I really get started, I'm going to go with a couple of honorable mentions because these are really good games, they're fun to play by yourself, but they're not necessarily designed for it. Okay? So, the first one is one of my all time favorites that I have talked about before Pandemic. Okay? Pandemic, like several other games, is a fully cooperative game. It's not designed explicitly for a single player, but it can still work as such. The reason is because, like I said, it's fully cooperative. Since it's fully cooperative, you can easily play as two, three, or even four people. It would take longer, it would be tougher, but you can certainly do it. And then you can still win. Because remember, for this game, it's everybody wins or everybody loses. Unlike some other games, like take uh, Shadows Over Camelot, you can't really do it with that one because you have the presence or the potential presence of a traitor. You could do it and just not worry about the traitor, but that's half the fun of games like that. So that's why Pandemic is one of my honorable mentions. On the same note of Pandemic, uh, there's another game that's really fully cooperative, but it actually is said that you can play it as just a single player. And that game is Arkham Horror. Unfo unfortunately, I don't have it. I have played it many times, but I don't own it. Instead, I'll represent it with my giant plush Cthulhu die. Because it's the closest I have. But again, like Pandemic, Arkham Horror is a fully cooperative game that you can play with a lot of people. Okay? And in the case of Arkham Horror, it actually says you can play it as a single player, but one thing that I'm not a huge fan of is that it doesn't have specific rules for one player. You still have all of the issues with the single player. Sure, it does the scaling and all that kind of stuff, which I do love, but mostly it's because I don't have it, fortunately. <laughs> My number five game comes courtesy of Z-Man Games, one of my favorite publishers. And in this case, it's actually a game that is part of a really big intellectual property now. And that is Walking Dead. This is a really, really great game. It's what can best be described as one of the only, if not the only, survival horror game. Maybe second only to Arkham Horror, like I mentioned earlier. But in this case, this game, uh, once again, like Arkham Horror, is said that you can play it as a single player. It's designed to be played single player, which is fine, and it can be fun. It is a good game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but a big part of this is really the cooperativeness of it. Uh, there's a mechanic in this game that actually lets your parties combine together and become one sort of super party that just roams around killing zombies and all that good stuff. You can go solo and you can play by yourself. Even if you're with a bunch of other people, you can play sort of the multiplayer solitaire, as it's called. And it is a good game to play and it is a fun game to play, but solo, it's very, very difficult. And it's not explicitly designed for single player. Nothing really changes with it. So that's why it's my number five. Number four on our list comes courtesy of Rio Grande Games, another very good developer, and one that I'm particularly proud of for games like Power Grid, which scale extremely well depending on the number of players. The particular game that I'm talking about now, though, is Race for the Galaxy. Very popular game, very good game, very well-made game, 
But uh, similar to Walking Dead, you essentially play this as multiplayer solitaire. Everybody's sort of doing their own thing, can't really interact with each other, except they did add a mechanic for having war with other people, but I don't think it really works. It, the situation rarely comes up. It, it's not really worth it. But in one of the expansions to this, they added solitaire rules, which is essentially a sheet that programs an AI uh, to play against you. The problem that I have with it is that the instructions are fairly convoluted. Right? Once you get it, once you understand what's going on, it's a lot easier, and it actually plays fairly well. And it's somewhat similar even to the regular game, because again, you're not interacting a lot with uh, people. And since you're not interacting a whole lot, it does uh, make a good way of uh, getting a decent AI out of a game that originally didn't have anything like it. So that's why Race for the Galaxy, my number four. In number three, we have one of my somewhat newly found favorite games uh, that I've been playing a good bit. It's uh, very similar to Dominion and comes to us courtesy of AEG, and that is Thunderstone. In this case, I've got Thunderstone Advance. I also do have the original game, which works well as a single player uh, also. And uh, on that note, the original Thunderstone... Uh, AEG re did release official rules to play uh, Thunderstone Solo, but for Thunderstone Advance, the Solo rules were actually released along with the game. And it's really, really cool. I like how it works because you're essentially going against a clock. And the clock is done by having the monsters go into the dungeon and then gradually they start going out and attacking the village. And you have to stop as many as you can, and if you stop more victory points worth of monsters than got to this got to the village then you win it's a good mechanic and i like it because they made it specific for single player gameplay it's nice when game developers do that as opposed to the other two that i showed where with walking dead and race for the galaxy it doesn't necessarily change the rules it just uh, in the case of race adds the mechanic to be able to play solo, or in the case of Walking Dead, you're just a single person wandering around. Whereas with Thunderstone, it doesn't change the rules drastically, but it adds a very good mechanic for being able to play solo, and it makes it fun because you can change up all the cards, you can do all that, and it tends to be a little bit easier. So, Thunderstone, my number three. In number two, we have a great game that I talked about before uh, with my list on games to play when you're angry. And this one comes to us courtesy of GMT. This one being Labyrinth. Now you all know Labyrinth and Twilight Struggle, two games that share very, very similar mechanics from the same company. But Labyrinth was the first one, the only one of the two, that has official published solo rules. And the way it works is fairly similar to Race for the Galaxy, where there's an AI that's programmed in a certain way, and you basically go by a mind map to figure out what the AI is going to do. And I think it's really fun because mostly I just really enjoy this game. This is my kind of game. Very heavily strategic, uh, very uh, heavy on important decisions, what you have to do, when you have to do that. Like, you got to know your tactics, and... Even though playing single player removes some of the intrigue of being next to the person, talking to them, potentially lying and saying, oh yeah, I'll totally play that card, or you can have that city, I don't care about it. It does remove some of that potential intrigue. When I play, I just say, I'm not going to believe a word that you're saying anyway. So the AI is very well done. I like it. I enjoy it. It's a fun game, and it works great as a single player. So that's why Labyrinth is my number two. Last but absolutely not least is my number one game 
for playing solo. And it's not necessarily a single game, but rather a game category, simply because of how they're designed and how they work. In this case, the example that I've got right here is Mage Knight. The category that I'm thinking of is all the tile building games, the tile exploration games. A lot of times the way that they work is you have a big giant list of all of these different scenarios that you can take part in. You've got ones that are strictly competitive, strictly cooperative, and in many cases strictly solo. And it makes it nice because you know that whatever you're doing was particularly designed to be played as a single player. You see this in a lot of games. Pretty much all of the D&D games, all of the uh, the D&D tile building games. Uh, also a new game that I recently got, Level 7, uh, which is a really fun game about aliens. But uh, the tile building games really are very deep and again just like Labyrinth very strategic and the nice thing about them is you really don't have to worry about AIs or if you do it's a very very simple mechanic like in the case of Mage Knight you just have what's known as a dummy player there's even an app there's uh, there's a phone app that lets you run a Mage Knight dummy so you just have to click it's your turn and then it's done and then you can go back to what you're doing it makes the game really easy to play and a lot of fun and that's why Mage Knight in particular, but tile building games in general, are my number one games to play solo. That's it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed my little video on my favorite games to play solo. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.